YouTube and welcome to the bug splattered glory of Georgia, the Atlanta area of Georgia to be exact. And if you've done any kind of work in or around the Atlanta area, you understand what the bug splattered glory of Georgia is. And all of its good and all of its ill. Georgia is Georgia. But I'll tell you what, folks, the dispatch services, they keep they seem to grow like weeds in a very poorly tended yard. And they haven't quite bought the vowel that let them solve the puzzle of me as an owner-operator not wanting anything to do with them in any capacity. Sometimes I take their calls just in case, just in case it's actually an important business call I need to take from a broker or a shipper or a receiver or a factory company. You know, there is, there's always the possibility that some of those calls might actually be a very important business I need to pick up and actually listen to. But 95% of the time, it is dispatchers trying to recruit me and not a, one of them except for maybe one maybe two people I've spoken to who have been offering me dispatch services not a one of them is a native English speaking person they're all from God knows where in the Middle East or India their native tongue is probably Farsi Urdu Pashto uh, Arabic there's so many languages in that area, I don't know idea. All I know is that English is not their first language, and some of them speak it fairly decently, but not a one of them sounds like they actually live in the USA, even though the phone number they're calling me from ostensibly is based in the USA. But let's be real here. We all know that in today's glorious age of technology, it is extremely easy to acquire a phone number in a given nation and then set up an internet relay wherein you could be calling from New Delhi and your, the caller ID might say Chicago or it might say San Antonio or it might say New York or Brooklyn or Buffalo or Charlotte or somewhere in the good old US of A. But as soon as I start listening, I understand, yeah, no, this is not an American. This is not someone who is going to have my best interests at heart. And as a result, it is not anyone that I can put my faith in to ensure that my business succeeds. They might say, oh, you know, we're gonna, we'll make sure that you get to see everything, I'll get full transparency, you can sign up for no money at all, it's free sign up, and then if you don't like it, you can, you can leave with no cost to you. It's like, yeah, no, I don't care what you're gonna, what your song and dance is, because I've heard it all before. And all I can guarantee that it's never gonna be that easy. I've never tried it, so maybe it is that easy. I don't know, I'm not going to find out because I don't want some two-bit third-party dispatcher between me and my money. I wanna deal with the brokers myself, and so far I've been doing very well with it. Granted, the rates being what they are, it's tough for everybody. It's it's not a good situation all around right now in terms of the rates, fuel, all of that. But we're coming up on peak season, so it's entirely possible rates might pick up as we get closer and closer to Christmas. But with my factoring setup, I'm only losing 3% of a given load, okay? 3% of every load is what my factoring company keeps for their fee. Dispatch services, I've heard pitches of 5%, 7%, 10%. It's like, why would I lose more money with a dispatcher when I could keep more money and just do my own dispatch? Because let's be real here, folks. Doing your own paperwork, doing your own dispatch, reading the load board, talking to brokers, it's not difficult. It's really easy. All you have to do is have a professional attitude, you know, 
understand what your worth is and be willing to play hardball or refuse a load if a broker's gonna stonewall you with a garbage rate. It's not difficult to do all of that and remain professional and maximize your money. Hey, if you're even that well set up where you don't even need to factor and you can afford to wait the 18 to 24 days or whatever it is for uh, a broker to pay out normally, you get to keep all that money yourself. Right? No 3% loss, no 5% loss on a quick pay deal, none of that. 100% of that line haul and the fuel surcharge and whatever miscellaneous other elements come into play there, all of that, all right into your pocket after 18 to 24 days. And that's assuming, of course, you've got, you know, tens of thousands in the bank where you can afford to wait 18 to 24 days to be paid. That's some folks, that's not me. I would like that to be me, but right now it's not, which is why I factor. But still, the dispatch services, it's like, I cannot wait for them to be regulated out of existence. Like, that's gonna make me very happy because I've told this story multiple times before, but when I was going to try to sign on with a broker, they said, no, we gotta have six months authority, but I was like, okay, fine. Well, so I was talking to him and just kind of asking questions and just kind of chewing the fat and figuring out some different things. And he was telling me that they have extreme problems with dispatch services because not only do they have to vet the dispatch service, now they have to vet the carrier that the dispatch service is pitching to them. So they still have to go through and do paperwork, not only on the dispatch service, but also on the carrier that's actually gonna move the freight because you can't just put that freight on a, on a truck or put that load on a truck and expect it to actually move because the broker still needs to do their due diligence, which is why a lot of brokers are requiring more and more and more operating time, active authority time before they'll actually sign you up because they want to avoid issues with dispatch services that are bringing brand new authorities to the table. And let's be real here, yes, the first three months of your active authority are going to be some of the toughest and some of the thinnest, depending on how you go about it. Because if you get in with the, the brokers that will work with brand new authorities like TQL, like C.H. Robinson, you get you know, your dedicated go-to people, ideally at both. I don't have an agent that I work with directly at uh, TQL at this time. Maybe one day I will. Um, but I've got a dedicated guy at CH Robinson. I've got a dedicated guy at Coyote Logistics. But, you know, you've got essentially two major reliable solvent options as a brand new authority. That is gonna be TQL and CH Robinson. Now, you can make money just working with those two brokers. Yeah, you might get some crap loads every now and again, just because you know it's well known that TQL rates are not the healthiest, but I have made good money pulling TQL loads. I've made really good money pulling C.H. Robinson loads. I've made really good money working with Coyote Logistics, okay? So, you know, it is still very strongly possible to make money without needing a dispatch service to get between you and the brokers, you and your money. Because as soon as you retain a dispatch service, there is now an entirely different entity between you and your business and your money. And they're not Americans. Now granted, they might actually be Americans. They might actually be immigrants who are here lawfully, who are just doing what they can to get ahead and they're working their tails off because they have got a cultural predisposition to work hard, to get ahead, to make money. And honestly, I respect the hustle. I've known a lot of Russians and Ukrainians 
and Polish folks who have had the exact same work ethic. They come here and they go right to work and they start grinding and they end up very wealthy because they find a way to make it work and they get it done. And they build their lives and have their families or they migrate their families over here lawfully. And they just keep working, they don't stop. They continue to advance themselves, they make money. So it's very difficult for me to have any form of disrespect for that hustle. But as I've said many times before, if I cannot clearly understand the person that I'm communicating with, especially when my money is on the line, I cannot trust that person to have my best interests at heart because small details can get lost in translation. And quite frankly, I am not about to put my business at risk in that capacity. Not now, not ever. Now, it's entirely possible also, maybe I'll grow my business over the next five to 10 years. Maybe I'll buy some trucks, maybe I'll buy some trailers. Maybe I'll hire some drivers or lease on some owner operators. And maybe I'll set it up where I've got dispatchers who are taking care of those drivers. And it's also entirely possible that the dispatchers I may hire in some nebulous, undefined future are going to be non-native English speakers. They're not going to be native-born speakers of English. They'll be immigrants. Or they'll be, you know, first generation. Or whatever the case may be, right? Where they came from a household where English was not the primary language. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the difference between a dispatch service cold calling me and an owner operator leasing on with me and understanding that they're the dispatch that's going to be their contact for any problems or for loads or for whatever the situation may be might be Polish with a thick accent or uh, Pakistani with a very thick accent or, you know, Iraqi for all I know. That's a completely different kettle of fish because that person will be based in an office where the driver can then walk into that office and get face-to-face -face interaction with that dispatcher, right? Because I would set up my business where everyone's working remote. I would have a centralized location where this is where everyone is accountable. Yeah, it would increase my overhead, but it would also ensure accountability on the part of the drivers working for me and on the other employees supporting that driver. Now that's down the road quite a ways. That may never happen. It might happen in two years. I have no idea. It's one of those things where I will find out when I get to that bridge and decide I'm going to cross it take another direction. But with that being said, YouTube, it's time to fight some Atlanta traffic, and I will see you down the road.